Hi, I'm Nav and I made this die storage and rolling tray. Let's take a look how we did it. Hey, I am looking for some material for a project I would like to make. And I think I found the perfect piece. Let me show you what I'm making today. So, I wanna make a dice tray for some tabletop RPG games. Now, just to give you an idea, I took some inspiration from Etsy. Now, Etsy has a lot of really cool designs, as I'm sure many of you know. If you don't, um, you can always check it out. But there's some great ideas for dice trays on here where they have a rolling tray, so you can actually roll dice like this, for example, for TTRPG games. So just an example, you can roll it. So they've got just a rolling tray or some have a storage, but I'm thinking of making both. So here's my rough idea at the moment. So I've got a dice storage unit here, so four slots for dice, a miniature slot if you use miniatures, and then a felt rolling tray over here as well, which I'm gonna cut out on the CNC machine. So let's have a look how we set this up in the software. Okay, so we're gonna create a new file. It's gonna be 20 inches by 10 inches with a one inch thickness. If this is different for you, obviously do change these values. Single sided job, inches, Z0 position off the material surface, and I'm gonna have the modeling resolution at high just in case I wanna use a modeling resolution uh, later. X, Y, datum on the bottom left. So the first thing I'm going to do is create our trays. So I'm going to make an 8 inch by 8 inch uh, radius external uh, by 0.125 radius inch corner rectangle. So I'm just going to create that. I'm just going to put this onto the sheet. I'm just going to pop it just about here. And then the next thing I'm going to do is offset this inwards by 0.25 inches. And then I'm just going to fillet these corners. So with the fillet tool just over here, again 0 0.25, 0 0.125, I'm just going to click each corner, fillet these, and then I'm going to select the whole lot by dragging my mouse over them, come over to the mirrored selected objects tool, flip it horizontally, and now we've got our setup for our trays uh, ready to go. The next thing I'm doing here is I'm dragging in some guidelines because I want to make sure that I can get this uh, pen slot and the phone slot to sit where I want them to. So at the moment that's on 8.75, so I'm just going to do that to 8.25, so that's 0 0.5 in. I'm going to do the same again for the bottom. Drag this onto here, move this up by 0 0.5. I've got my guidelines ready, now I can start making my rectangle. So the first one I'm going to make is 6.25 in width by 0.5 in height. It's going to create that. And the next one's going to be 3.25 in width and 0.25 in height. So I've got both those ready to go. So I'm just going to select my first one, grab it by the middle point there. And this is where my guidelines can come in handy because it allows me to place it on the line in the center point, ready for our toolpathing later, and I'm going to do the same with this one. And again, you can use the snap options in the software to find that center point and place your slots into place. I'm just going to make sure this one is centered. So it's going to drag that down. There we go. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is set up our slots. So I'm going to go to create a circle tool, and I want a three inch diameter circle. Again, find that middle point, and then offset this one inwards by 0.25 inches. And then we're going to set up our frames for our uh, dice trays. So what we're going to do is hop into our rectangle tool again, and we're going to make a height of 5.5 inches. Sorry, a width of 0.25 inches and a height of 5.5 inches and click create and then I'm going to do the same thing again except this time I'm going to do 6.25 inches in width and 0.25 inches in height. I'm just going to click create. Now you'll see what I'm doing here in just a moment. I'm just going to click that and drag this into the center point here. That snaps into place nicely. Do the same thing with this one. Grab it and place that there. Now this makes a frame for us to then grab another rectangle with a radius corner and this time we're going to find the point at which these two meet in the corner here and you can see because I've got my snapping options on I can just drag the rectangle out from here which will meet all of these edges and then 
we can just drop that into place. Clean that up just a little bit. And there we are. We've got our dice tray frame uh, ready to start editing. I'll just raise this just a little bit to meet the top of that. There we go. All ready to go. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a quick trick. If you hold shift and select all of these vectors here, so the circle, the frame, the frame here, and we're going to use this weld tool over here. It gets rid of all the sections we didn't need there. And then what we're going to do is select this out vector first, then our kind of cross shape in the middle, then our circle. And we're going to use this tool here, which is a trim selected objects to last object tool. I'm going to use inside boundary, hit clear, and it should then create our individual dice traits. Now you may notice right at the bottom here, what happened here is the software is effectively not knowing which is inside and outside because it's overlapping. So I wanted to show you how you can get rid of this. If you go N for November on the keyboard to node editing, right click this one and go cut vector, right click this one, cut vector, select it, and you can now drag this down, drag this down. That vector is now ready for you to get rid of and delete. So we can select that and delete. And then we go to the normal trim tool, which is the interactive trim tool. We can just cut it that way. And now we've got our individual sections all ready to go. The next thing I'm going to do is make the finger slots. So I'm just going to draw a one inch length line. So you can just do this with your mouse. You can see the L indicates that's one inch. And I'm just going to pop this onto its own layer. Move to layer, new layer, finger slots bottom because the right hand side is the bottom side of the tray I'm going to give it a different color and then I'll pop that into the side here hold control on the keyboard drag across to this side and now we've got two finger slots for the bottom tray I'm going to do the same for the top so uh, I'm just going to go ahead and create another polyline of one inch there we are and again move to a new layer top finger slots give it a different color let's give it purple pop it down onto the halfway point hold control drag it across pop it down and now what we're going to look at is now layering everything so it's easy to see which things are on which layer so I'm going to put the lid rolling tray on its own layer so move to layer and I'm just going to call this a lid rolling tray and we're going to pop this to a blue color and then we're going to put all the dice tray slots on their own layer I'm going to call this one item slots let's make that one red and then I'm going to put the um, actual main box elements onto their own layer okay. uh, outside box so there's the outside of it let's make that orange and then this inner bit here we can leave because it's the only one left but we can put it onto its own layer if you want to and we can call this one the um, lid allowance because that is going to allow the lid from here to here to sit on top of that so this is going to be a lip here because it'll be pocketed down and this will sit on top of this section just here so with that let's look at some toolpathing so when we hop into the toolpath menu you'll see that i've got some toolpaths already set up for you now the first one is the item slots now i'll use the um, vector selection option here to select all the closed vectors on this layer so the item slots layer and this is why layering can come in really handy because it can save you the time of having to click this and it can organize your vectors for you so you can get them ready for machining in a nice and organized manner and now i've used a quarter inch end mill i went down a depth of 0.7 inches and the reason i did that is because i need to make sure the dice can fit in here uh, nice and snug but not so snug uh, that the lid won't fit on uh, tightly but also not so loose that they'll be jostling around in here when i'm actually carrying the tray around with me so i measured my dice beforehand and i went with this value on this side but there will be a value of a pocket cut deeper on this side as well or deep enough i should say so the dice can fit in without moving around too much but so i still have a, a functional rolling tray and the lid can fit on top so i've used a quarter inch end mill here use the offset option 
I uh, haven't gone for a pocket allowance here because I don't need one, and I've called it item slots. The next one is my bottom lid seal, and I'm just going to amend the name there. And with this one, I went for a depth of 0.25, so I've stepped it down just a little bit around the seal here. But the important thing here is this, the machining allowance, or the pocket allowance. I've gone for minus 0.02. That will effectively make sure the machine goes inwards a little bit by 0.02 inches. And that is because the lid needs to fit snugly on top of this. So this is 0.25, this is 0.25. So right now it won't fit on quite right. So you want to make sure that you machine a little bit of material away so you can get this to fit nice and snug on top of that. And again, you can save this toolpath off if this is too snug while it's still on the machine and run this toolpath again separately so you can get that nice fit. So you can always cut the lid out first, then approach this one do the machining allowance around here, see if this fits while it's on the machine, and then make any adjustments if you need to. The next one I've gone for is the rolling tray. Now this is over here. Um, I've gone for a depth of 0.45 inches, which if you recall is added on to my 0.7 for the bottom part of the tray, which gives me enough room for my dice to um, fit into the tray. But do make sure you measure your dice uh, yourself and uh, make sure that they can fit in this area. Again, quarter inch end mill, but make sure you check your settings are safe and appropriate for your machine. Now the cutout pass, I use the vector selector here to select the uh, outside box area on the layer that we have, if you recall, which is this one here. And you'll notice I've got some tabs on this one, and the tabs are placed around the edges here. But you notice what you can do is you can edit the tabs. I made them 0.45 in length, 0.25 in thickness, and I edited them because I wanted to drag them away from the finger slots. So this is why they're placed here and here and then here and here. So you can place them manually or you can drag them and move them if you just do this. But I place them there so they're outside of the way of the finger slots so we can get them. Again, not uh, another quarter inch end mill. So this is quite, you can see a pattern here. I'm using a quarter inch end mill for a lot of these cuts because it can fit into a lot of these areas and it saves me changing tools. Again, with the lid finger slots, again, I use the selector to this time use open vectors on the top finger slots layer. So this is where it comes in handy, uh, because you, as you can imagine, if they're not the right color or trying to select them, it'll be a bit difficult to see them without the layering option there. I've set this a profile to on. This is really important. It's on the line. So it's not outside or right or going inwards. It's on the line. So what we want to do is then make sure that the depth is 0.25 for the lid. So this is 0.25 and I'll cut 0.25 down. Now the, the important bit about the bottom one is because we removed this seal around the edge already, you need to make sure that the cut depth is therefore reflected. So what we need to do is start at the new depth that this material has been removed around. So we need to go down to 0.25 as the start depth, then cut down another 0.25 for our, for our slots here, and then uh, it should be safe to uh, machine away. So you want to make sure that it runs in this order so that you get your seal done first, and then you do your bottom lid uh, finger slots. And I can just show you what it looks like in the preview. So I can just select on my toolpass here. I can slow this down a little bit for you, and I can just preview your toolpass. And you can see in version 11, we can actually see it all in action. So when it comes to actually machining it, if you've got your laptop next to the machine and you run this preview, you can see what areas you can see to uh, that will be machined first. So you can look at the machine and go, OK, I know it's going to do this first, then this one then this one, then this one. So you, you can keep an eye out for any movements that you're not expecting. So this is really handy for that reason. So let's just speed that up a little bit. Oh, let's just slow that down a little bit there. And you can see this was the allowance, this cut out just there around the edge. And now it's doing the rolling tray lid. Let's just fold that just a little bit. And then here you can see the 3D tabs being made. So you can see how they're forming. You can see how they're being cut out. And now right away, I can see an issue. And the issue is that I haven't gone deep enough with my cutout. And this is why the preview is really important, because you can make an easy mistake like this. And then this is where the preview really comes into shine. So let's amend that now that we've seen that in the preview. Let's go down to the full depth of our thickness. If you don't recall it, you can always do Z equals, and it'll give you the thickness there as well. Calculate. Now let's run that again. And this time, you can see it's cutting down to the right depths. That's much better. So now with that in hand, let's go look at machining this out. Okay, so now that everything's set up in the software, we can now go ahead and cut it out on the machine. So let's get our material, let's get it prepped for the machine.
just got the lid done. Uh, you'll notice actually when I was cutting it, I actually left the finger slots till last. And the reason why I did that is because I wanted to get the cutout done first so it doesn't have to engage as much material. Risk doesn't risk as much chipping out. So I got the finger slots done in uh, last for that reason. Uh, but now the lid's done, I'm gonna now cut out the actual dice uh, holding trays and the pen slot, etc. And the reason I cut the lid first is because now what we can do is with that machining allowance we put on for the trays, we can now see if the lid fits while it's still on the machine. So if you need to make the allowance a little bit bigger, you can just keep it where it is and then you can machine it around again. So we're gonna set that up in just a moment. Okay, so we've now finished our tray cut along with our lid. Now the reason I haven't sanded down my lid yet is because I want to test everything is fitting as it should. So I'm just going to line up these finger holes here with the finger slots just down here. So let's just have a look at the fit. And it is all good. Now if you recall in the video, I set up an allowance for, I will show you this lip just here. So if you're finding that when you come to put the lid on, that the allowance is a little bit too tight, you can always run that toolpath again with a higher allowance to take that in just a little bit so you can get a tighter fit with that as well. So with that said, I'm actually quite happy with how that turned out. So I'm going to get this off the machine, sand it down, get rid of those tabs, and then we're going to have a look at our finished ice tray. Okay, so we've got the finished dice tray over here. So here we've got the rolling lid on this side and we've got our dice slots over here. Speaking of dice slots, I'm just gonna pop them in and you can also pop in your phone in the slot over here. And you've also got a slot down here if you wanna put your phone this, phone this way and you can also put a pen or pencil in there as well. Now, while I am happy with how this tray turned out, I think it could do with some customization. So I'm gonna hop over to design and make and I'm gonna download more of the clip art I'm going to pop it on top of the lid here to make the most of my space on the wood. So let's hop into the software and let's look at how we're going to do that. Okay, so now we're on the Design and Make site. I'm just going to go ahead and look at some clip art that I think would fit well on top of my lid. And I actually quite like this one here, the Twin Dragons. Uh, and in fact, I think I want to go for a dished version. You can see here we've got multiple versions of it where we've got a recess version, a dish version, and a regular version. I want the dish version because I think with our lid around this, as you can see here with this preview, it looks quite nice. And I think having that dish recess into the lid will look really nice uh, and it allows us to get some really nice detail. I think that will fit the theme very nicely of tabletop role-playing games. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this one to cart and I'm gonna check out and download this into the software. Okay, so now that we're back in the software, let's have a look at adding in our clip art. Now, just one thing before I go ahead and do that, you can notice that currently I need to put this on the lid. So now I have to consider, do I make this a double-sided job or can I still make this a single-sided job? And what I'm actually gonna do is keep it a single-sided job, but make use of the sheets function right here. So I'm gonna right click and click add new sheet. And this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it so it's the dimensions of the lid exactly. This is really important because the way I'm going to machine this now, if I right click and edit that, is that I'm going to effectively be setting the XY datum off the middle of the lid. So this this sheet here is now the exact size of my lid, the exact size, which is eight inches by inches and one inch thickness. I'm going to go off the material surface again, but this time, as I mentioned, I'm going off the XY datum position of the middle because what I can do is I can now place this on my machine, but I can use the middle confidently as the XY dating position so it knows where to cut from on the lid. Because typically you would do it off the bottom left hand corner in my case on my machine, but because I'm machined with all that material, I need a new XY dating position. So for the lid, I've gone for the middle area this time and I'm gonna use a modeling resolution very high uh, because I am using the model this time. 
I'm going to hit OK. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at bringing in our clip art. So let's go over to the clip art tab and you can see I've downloaded uh, my clip art with the twin dragon. So I'm just going to drag that onto the worksheet. I'm just going to hit F9 on the keyboard to center it. And I'm actually quite happy with the size it is right there. I'm just going to delete this guideline for the moment. And let's have a look at that in the 3D view. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. That looks really good. I'm actually quite happy with that size. It makes a lot of use of the lid. But it's got plenty of room around it if I wanted to add anything later or it gives me room around to machine safely. Now, with the modeling uh, use here, we want to make sure we've got a zero plane in as well. So um, we'll add a zero plane in and we want to make sure that's there because this helps the software know where this dish edge meets the top of the material here. So when the tool's exiting, cutting out, it knows that there, there's a, a plane here, a zero plane helps it know where to exit. What can happen is if you don't have a zero plane is that your tool can meet the edge and essentially vertically exit. And that might be, leave some tool marks. Whereas with a zero plane, it knows where this model plane meets the zero plane edge. And so it allows it to exit a lot more smoothly. Now you can see here I've got um, some space here still to utilize with the middle of the dragon. So I think I'm going to add a design to that. So let's have a look at bringing in a bitmap so we can add a bit more flair onto the middle of this design. Okay, before anything else actually, I'm just going to move this to its own layer called dragon. So you can see here I've got a layer called dragon. It just means I can turn this off when I'm importing my bitmap uh, to trace. So I can turn that off, go over to uh, import bitmap and I found an image of a license free image of a D20 online. So I'm just going to use this to trace. I'm going to move this to its own layer. And I'm going to call this one new layer. So let's go for D20 image. And then I can go for a different color of pink. In fact, let's not go pink. I'll actually go with red. So it just really stands out to me. Okay. So I'm just going to make sure that this is the active layer. There you go. And I'm just going to uh, click on the trace bitmap tool. And because it's currently black and white, I'm going to make sure that it's set to black and white. I'm going to hit preview just to see what it looks like so far. I'm actually quite happy with that. That looks pretty good. It's picked up all the detail there. It's quite nicely. So I'm going to go with that. I'm going to hit apply, close this out. And that is our D20 vectors. I'm just going to delete this because I don't need the actual bitmap anymore. So that's gone. But I've got the vectors and this, that's great. So I'm actually going to do some work here. I'm actually going to get rid of the numbers because I think just the outline of the D20 is actually quite nice on its own. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ungroup this. So right click, ungroup objects, and I'm just going to get rid of the parts I don't want. So I'm going to hold shift, click on these, and get rid of any bits I do not want, which are the numbers. So let's get rid of these. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to use the outline of the D20 to then uh, put into the middle of the, the twin dragons. And that, I think that will give it quite a nice effect because we'll have a both a 3D carving and a 2D carving using a V-bit, which I think will give quite a lovely effect. So now that I've got rid of those numbers, I'm just going to highlight this again and I'm going to group it all together again. So right click and then I'm just going to group objects. So now I've got my vector ready to go. So I'm just going to turn my dragon layer back on again, make it the active layer, and then I'm just going to size this down while holding shift from the bottom left hand corner until it's around about the size I want, which is about that size there. Pop it in. Let's have a look at making the most of this space. So let's try and make that just a little bit bigger. Yeah, I think that looks really good. I think it looks very nice. I'm glad with that. So what we're going to do now is have a look at some tool pathing. But before we do that, I'm going to set this dragon because I want to go to the modeling tab and choose this option here to create a vector boundary around selector components. And what this does, as the title suggests, is it creates a vector boundary around my selected component. So I had the dragon selected there and it all the dragons, I should say, and it's made the vector around it. And this is going to come in really important when we come to tool path it in just a moment. So now let's have a look at running some toolpaths for this set of dragons. 
Now, before we do anything else, we need to make sure on our toolpath menu that we go to the set option at the top here in the material setup, that we make sure that our material is to the right thickness, our XY datum is middle, because remember, we've already cut the lid out, so we want to make sure the datum is now set from the middle and not anywhere else on the um, on the actual lid. And we'll make sure the Z0 is still off the material surface. Now, with the model position of the material, this is a really important step of the project because we've already machined the underside of this lid out. So the opposite side, so this underside here of this lid has been machined out. If you remember, that's a pocket for the rolling tray. So that means whatever the model size is has to be only so big that it doesn't go and cut through the top side of the lid and therefore onto the underside of the lid where our rolling tray is. So if you recall, the thickness was 0.45 inches for my rolling tray. So I've gone to 0.32 inches for my uh, Dragon model height. And that means I've still got uh, around 0.77 left of material between this and the uh, the top part of the tray or the, or the clip part and the rolling part of the tray. So these uh, settings for my clearance and plunge are safe for my machine. Please double check them before you go to your machine. I'm going to hit OK and let's look at our toolpath. So the roughing toolpath, now the objective here is to remove as much of the material as possible with a larger tool, which is why I've used a ball, a ball nose, 8 inch ball nose, um, to try and get as much detail as I can from a roughing pass with a step over 40% here, um, but without removing too much material because I want to leave a little bit of material, which is what my machining allowance is here of 0 .0, 0 0.025 for my finishing pass to clean up. Now the crucial part of this is I've used a selected vector option here. Now what does that mean? Well in technical support, which is the department I work in, I get a lot of questions around finishing and roughing passes in general. And one of the things that comes up often is why the machine is taking so long to machine and sometimes the person has the project set up with the material boundary option and what that means is it's just cutting empty space in this scenario if i use the material boundary it would just be wasted moves over these areas here whereas because i've limited the machining just to anything inside of this vector with the selected vector option it will only machine anything inside of this vector which already limits you know reduces your time down uh, for machining and limits your machining to this section here only which is quite uh, a great tool so I've called this one 3D Roughing Dragon, and I'm just going to hit Calculate. And with the next toolpath, we can think about something similar. So again, with the finishing toolpath, we want to know we want to limit our machining just to this section here. So what we can do is click, double click our finishing toolpath, and let's have a look at how I set this one up. So again, I use the selected vector, and I use a smaller tool here. I use a tapered ball nose tool here. And the idea here is, again, the Roughing Toolpath is a larger tool that will clean up the majority of the material and the finishing tool here the smaller tool will come up and uh, get into the areas that the, the larger tool could not and you'll notice i've set up a raster strategy here not an offset now the reason i haven't done that an offset is because with the center of the model here if i turn off the toolpath is if the offset starts from the inside and goes out as it works around the problem will be is when it starts to offset like this and then eventually gets to the edges of the circle here, the tool will be going up and over eventually. So it's trying to offset but go around and up and then you may get some tool markings on the inner edge here, which you don't want. Whereas the 3D uh, raster option, it will go across left to right or depending on the raster angle that you set, but in my case, it'll be going left to right here and it will be going up, over, down, across and over so you get a much nicer and cleaner finish so that's a good tip there for you as well now finally with my carving for the d20 i've actually gone for a profile toolpath and what i've done here is i've checked this option at the bottom here project toolpath on 3d model this is really important because what this will do is it will project the toolpath onto this model here you'll notice it's a 3d model so what this will do is it will project the toolpath that it's doing here onto this section here as opposed to up here where it doesn't need to be. So I don't have to worry about getting the cut depth uh, exactly right to where the model has ended up cutting to. I can just use this option here to project on 3D model. It knows where the model currently sits in the material and it will therefore apply the toolpath onto that area because it knows where that area is. So what I've done is I've selected that vector there for my D20. I've used a 60 degree V-bit uh, a quarter inch 60 degree v-bit and i've set it to on so what that means is it will drive the v-bit on these lines not around them not inside of them on the lines at a very shallow depth of 0.01 and what that means is just the very tip of the v-bit will go in and machine around it and you should get a lovely 
lovely finish on that one so let's have a look at our preview for it so let's run our 3d roughing so what you should see is from the bottom here it's rastering across and it's revealing more of the dragon as it goes down each depth now this is a great tool the preview because you can move it around now in v11 and v11 11.5 so this is a really wonderful tool and that you can move the preview round and you can actually see what the tool is doing and where now I actually use this when I use pro uh, when I make projects on the machine because I know the toolpath then starts at the bottom. And so if on the machine it starts somewhere else, already I know because of the preview that something's gone wrong. So this is a really, really great tool for knowing that you're running the toolpath correctly and that everything is going according to plan. So let's just speed that up and let's look at our finishing toolpath. So you can see it's got a lot of detail out of there, but the finishing toolpath is now going to go in and it's going to get a lot more of that detail out with the smaller tool. So you'll see you're getting a nice clean finish here, getting rid of some of the tool markings and it's starting to reveal a lot more of the detail that the ball noise couldn't get into. So it's cleaning up a lot of the areas here. You'll see the wings start to look and the scales start to look a lot more pronounced. So let's just speed that up just a little bit. And there we go. We've got a wonderful looking dragon there. Really nice detail. And then finally, E20 carving and there's our V bit so it's just carved on top of that uh, for you as well so with our tool pass all set up we can look at saving them out but before I do that I just want to make uh, a note of something that I did in the software before uh, you receive this file I actually made an edit to the file that you'll be receiving which is I actually changed the radius of the rectangles here to have a 0.25 radius just because I thought it looked a lot better than 0.125 so a quick way to show you how you can change these yourself if you ever decide to change these you can go back into the rectangle tool here and you can just add in a different radius and it will reflect that on the rectangle that you've selected so I just thought I'd point that out as one more note that I made a slight change to these just because I thought it looked better but as I mentioned you can change this to uh, any format that you'd like so if you prefer square edges you can do that if you'd like rounded edges or with uh, a different radius you're certainly welcome to change the file but just thought i'd point that out just so you're aware i made some edits to the file but with that said let's save off our toolpaths and let's machine this out okay so with that now set up in the software let's have a look at machining out our lid on our machine Okay, so we've now finished the cut. So this is the 3D part of the lid all done now. So I'm gonna get this off the machine and I'm gonna go have a look at finishing it up. As you can see, I've got quite nice detail out of this. Actually, I'm quite happy with how it turned out and I love the, love the engraving on the middle part of it. I'm glad I chose that. So let's get this off the machine and let's finish it up. Okay, and this is the finished result. So as you can see, the lid turned out really nicely. I'm actually glad I made use of that space with the clip art from Design and Make. Looks really good. The V carving came out really well. Got a lot of detail in there using that tapered ball nose. So I'm really happy with that. And as you can see here, got plenty of room for our dice. We've got a slot to put our mini in. And of course we have our rolling tray as well. And I put a little bit of felt in there just so got a nice little soft landing for the dice. Now, a couple of things I'm gonna give you as pointers. Now, obviously dice can come in different sizes. Now you can see this dice compared to this one, there is clearly a size discrepancy. So what I would do is just make sure to measure your dice before you put them in. Uh, easy to change the file. All you have to do is just make this pocket a lot deeper. You can see I've got plenty of material to work with here. So if you wanna make this pocket a little bit deeper, you can do also take into account how much room you're gonna lose because of the felt. So take that into account when you're doing your lid as well, but you don't have to use a felt if you don't want to. 
But those are the key points. And again, you don't have to have two phone slots if you don't want to. Maybe you want a bigger slot for an iPad, for example, or some sort of tablet, and you're more than welcome to do that. Again, you can also put some more engravings around the corners here if you'd like to, but this is completely modular. If you wanna change the design, maybe you're more of a poker player or maybe you play other card games, you could pop in a card slot in there instead, instead of a dice slot. So if you don't need the extra dice slots, pop in a card slot or something else that you may use. But I hope you enjoyed it. You can find this on your VNCO account. This will be a free file to all of you. And don't forget that the clip art is available to purchase on Design and & Make. And feel free to follow us on our socials like Instagram, YouTube, and on Facebook. And please get in touch. If you'd like to see more of this, please let us know. Cheers.